Hi, I'm Aaron. Uh, this is my second YouTube review on a film, and this is my good friend, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's on. <laughs> we um, are here to review yes. The Giver. The film, The Giver. It was made in 2014, I believe, and it was directed by uh, Philip Noyce. I I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And apparently he directed um, two of the Jack Ryan movies starring Harrison Ford. And also he directed the film The Bone Collector with Angelina Jolie and um, Denzel Washington. And with that said, this movie, The Giver, is nothing like any of his previous films. That's true. Okay, so while you have a lot of the patriotic, uh, very violent, action-driven films, The Giver is much more of a um, psychologically driven um, emotionally motivated films, uh, much different than his previous work. Yeah, it's not action-packed. If anything, it's really lacking action in this film, which is actually a good thing, because a lot of these dystopian science fiction movies like um, The Hunger Games or The Divergent series, mm -hmm. they're very action-driven, and the characters are good, but they're not great. So anyway, the pl basic plot of the movie is we have this world sometime in the future where we don't, aren't really ever given a date, but everyone sees black and white, and we have reached as a world something called sameness, where everyone dresses the same, looks the same, uh, feels the same, um, lives the same, behaves the same. There's like a, a strict code of conduct everybody follows, and there is no pain, there is no joy, there is no love, there is no hate, there is no death, and as we find out, there really is no life. Right. Um, and there's one boy, um, Jonas, I can't remember the actor's name. Brendan Thwaites or something? I don't know how you pronounce that. That was Alexander Skarsgård or something. something. That's the father. Really? Yeah. Oh. At any rate, and he is seeing things differently. He's starting to see colors, he's starting to feel things. And um, in when all the people in the society are assigned their jobs, he's assigned to be the receiver of memory. I'm going to let Aaron explain a little bit about how all that works. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Oh. Any sign there. <laughs> Basically, in the society, there's one person who is given or the ability to remember all these memories of the past so they can guide the leaders to choose and make the right decisions that are best for their community. Jeff Bridges plays the giver, who is the original receiver of memory who guides the leaders. I guess the whole um, crux of the film is that no one has any memory in the society except for one person, and that person is highly knowledgeable and can give advice, I guess, to the leaders. So right, right. the giver, Jeff Bridges, is giving his memories, or the memories of the whole community, to Jonas, who is receiving them so that he can advise in the future, and then he'll eventually pass them on, uh, presumably, to another person. That being said, when you go into this movie, there's going to be parts that completely make no sense and they never get resolved. Um, and the first time I watched it, I didn't know what I was getting into, so I was kind of watching it. I was like, okay, that's weird, that's weird. How does How is that possible? How is it possible to transfer memories that aren't even your own to someone else by holding on to their arms? That makes no sense. But it doesn't need to, and that's the whole point of the movie. And to interject on that note, it really, uh, I think the brilliant part about the film is it doesn't make any attempt to explain anything. So when, when memories are being imparted or received or anything like that, they don't try and cleverly tell you, well, this is how it's done. Right, it's just accepted as a fact. Right. Similar to, I think, the movie Frequency with uh, Jim Caviezel and Dennis Quaid, uh, there was something um, supernatural going on, and they just made kind of a passing stab at it and let the audience just sit there and believe it instead of analyzing like every little bit, and that I think would leave the audience free to pick it apart. So Right. I read the book and watched the movie, and I loved both. Um, I prefer the movie just because it, I find it more relatable. Um, part of the differences between the book and the movie is that in the book, the kids are like 12 years old, which it's kind of weird. It just wouldn't have worked for the movie, and in the movie they're like 16, 17, 18. And it makes it makes way more sense, so like with that I was fine. You know, there's some other differences, but the main, I, the main idea of the book and the movie is represented clearly, and uh, it's, it's just very well done. So anyway, back to the plot. Jonas is starting to receive memories from, uh, from the giver, and he's starting to 
really get excited because he's experiencing life. It really is a movie about life. It is. And the wonders of it life. Is. He starts discovering colors and everything like he said. We he experiences music for the first time. And he's wowed. You can see him caressing the piano and kind of like with this look of shock on his face. Like, oh, what is happening? And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, yeah, what is happening? Why does music touch us the way it does? It's been, actually, music's been called the language of the emotions. Um, it, the, the cool thing for me is, while he's hearing the, the piano being played for the first time, he's, he's, he's in awe and he's like, this is beautiful. But then the giver hits an a off-key note and immediately Jonas stops. And it's, it's, it just struck me as, wow, how do our brains and how do our souls and spirits, uh, how are we able to discern what sounds good and what sounds bad, discord from, um, from harmony? And that was really interesting to me. Back to the plot. So Jonas, while he's discovering all this new stuff, he has a couple of key friends. There's um, his friend Asher, who's the prankster or jokester of, the, of his childhood. And then there's a lovely young lady named Fiona. You know, he doesn't have any sort of feelings for Fiona. He doesn't know what those feelings are. But once he starts receiving the memories, he starts seeing color. He sees her hair is brown. And at one point, he sees her eyes are, are quite blue. And he starts to feel what they call stirrings for her. <laughs> and, who could, and who could blame the young man, I say. But at any rate, he, he <laughs> stops taking his... Jonas, <laughs> <Hey>, sit up. <laughs> Jonas stops taking his morning injections. What the injections are is everyone in the community takes them, it removes all pain, all memory, all... It's basically what keeps them in that robot mode. And it, it suppresses their emotions. It suppresses their emotions. He stops taking them at some point, he fools the sensor by putting an apple over it. As he stops taking those, he starts feeling more. Well, at one point, he starts to realize he loves Fiona, and he convinces her to do the apple trick and to stop taking her injections. And um, that's when he gets his first ally, really, outside of the giver. He meets her in a secluded place, and uh, they share a kiss. <sighs> hmm. Anyway, after kissing her, she starts to awake from her, her sort of uh, uh, robot nature, and she starts to feel things, too. Just, everything's going fine and dandy until he suddenly discovers pain. And not just a little bee sting pain, but we're talking serious pain. He sees um, elephants being slaughtered or poached for no other reason than to get the ivory from their tusks. And then later on, he is injected into a war scene, a battle scene, in which uh, people are killed and shot ruthlessly, and there's blood, and there's screaming, and there's crying, and there's shouting, and, and it's, it's a totally freaky experience. In fact, it causes him to quit his job. Well, it's completely foreign to him. If you grew up your whole life not understanding what death was, because there is no death in this society. They're, they're released to elsewhere. Yeah, they're, it's called releasing someone to elsewhere, which is basically um, euthanasia. True. Did I pronounce that right? You did pronounce that right, euthanasia. And we're not talking about young people living on the continent of Asia, we're talking about euthanasia, yeah. which is the um, murder of um, undesirables, uh, usually used in context to uh, el the elderly. That even those experiences with pain and death aren't enough to convince him that he needs to impart these memories to the whole community. In fact, he gets scared and quits. What finally convinces him to, to stand up and take action is he's shown a scene of his father, if you will, the head of his family unit in the community, um, basically killing a baby um, in a very cold, clinical, this is my everyday job sort of uh, sort of thing. It's a very chilling scene and we, we see the baby, and we see it get injected in the head with a needle, we see it die. Um, it's actually very, very shocking. Um, but it, it turns the film because it suddenly gives him a reason to act. Before right. it was like, these memories are cool, yeah, all this music, wow, but big deal, everybody's already enjoying themselves. Yeah, everything's good the way it is. Why rock the boat? Yeah. I'll, I'll just touch quickly on the acting in that scene. The acting from Jonas is phenomenal in that scene. Also, um, Jeff Bridges was interesting in that scene because you can see him, he knows what it is, and this is the first time Jonas is seeing any of this, and, and he's kind of planting seeds in Jonas's mind and he's saying, but what can we do? Right. Trying, to give him, trying to get him to think about what can we actually do to stop this from happening? And there's a line in that moment, which I love, Jeff Bridges says to Jonas, he says, he doesn't know what's wrong. He can't feel anything. And Jonas turns around and he goes, if we can't feel, then what's the point? And that sums up the whole movie. This movie just brings to light how, how life really is. Right. Why, why did God create us with feelings? 
why did God create us with emotions? Uh, it was, certainly wasn't an accident, and this right. film kind of explores the reasons why and what life would be like without it. But anyway, Jonas decides that this is, has gone on far enough. He's decided that uh, the time has come to act. Important plot point. Uh, at some point during his training, uh, Jonas finds a map of the whole community, and there's a ring around it uh, called the the boundary of memory. Is there? Yeah. A right? Yes. And yeah. It, it's it's told that if the giver or or the receiver of memories ever crosses this boundary, their memory returns. Everyone remembers it. The whole community becomes life as we know it now. Right. And so his whole idea is to take Gabriel, the little baby, and cross that boundary and make everything like it was so that people will wake up, so to speak, and stop killing the babies and, uh, and start feeling and loving again. Right. It's also not clear whether Jonas actually comes back. Yeah, um, some people are going to have an issue with that. Um, I, per I personally, I love the way the movie ended. I think it works because... And what, what we're assuming happens in the end, and we won't spoil it for you, even though we spoil the rest of the movie, um, he, we, he meets what we essentially assume is his actual family, his real family. You could take it that way. That was my assumption, and, and that may be enough to draw, keep him from going back to the community. But again, that's never touched upon, that's just how I took it. Yeah, I could be wrong. So uh, let's talk content a little bit here. The movie is PG-13 for... Okay. Um, it was rated PG-13 for thematic elements, including a scene or sequence of violence, which just, it's a scene of war that's given to him as a memory. It's not a violent movie. No, it's not. not it, by it, it's, it's a PG, except for the fact that the, the thematic elements are very heavy. Um, we're talking murder of children, we're talking euthanasia. Um, we're talking adolescent stirrings. I don't think I need to elaborate on that. No. Um, it, a lot of teen stuff, a lot of uh, emotion, a lot, a lot of it might just be too much for a younger person to understand. I was thrilled that there was no foul language uh, of any yeah. form in this movie. Um, it's just no proof that you can make a great, great Hollywood movie without unnecessary uh, foul language. There was nothing, not even euphemism. It just focused on the story, yeah. on the script, and I was very impressed with that. It's a beautiful movie. It's a beautiful movie. It, it, there's scenes that are just awe-inspiring because we're so used to life as we know it, we never stop to think about how beautiful a sunset is yeah. or mm -hmm. how amazing the color orange is or you know, every, you know, what, what it feels like to you know, soft versus rough and you know, pain versus uh, joy. Versus, every, every feeling and emotion we just kind of are used to, mm -hmm. and this movie turns you on to the fact that this is an amazing world we live in, and uh, God is an incredible creator, and definitely a creator who um, loves variety. There's two scenes in this movie that I just love, and for me it's maybe some of the greatest moments, not in filmmaking ever, but for me, out of like good almost movie. any movie I've ever seen. It's so powerful. There's a scene um, where when Jonas finally crosses the boundaries and the memories come back. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to see a film that portrays life in under a minute and what life means, it's right there. Watch yeah. this clip because it's just beautiful. It really is. It shows happiness and love and death and pain and sorrow and you see a man yeah. crying, you see a lady on her deathbed. Religion you see, even. You see learning knowledge. different religions, you see, like you said, knowledge, you, you see just what it's like to live life. Right. And that's what the whole movie is about. It's about there is so much good, but there is bad, but that's what makes the good so much better. You cannot have love without hate. You cannot have um, life without death. You cannot have joy without pain. Um, so it's not a it, it's not a matter of can we eliminate one because if you eliminate half of those, you've just eliminated the other half. If you eliminate pain, well then where is joy? Uh, at one point, the, a character in the film is given the feeling of loss, and it's a, a very grieving experience for her. And you know, you stop and think about, well, what is loss? It's the absence of something you had, and and. It's just amazing. Our, God has built our world on contrasts, on, on two sides, you know, and, and that's that's just incredible to me. And I, I like the way it pointed that out. Like he's saying, the scene in the end where everyone's kind of awakened is very powerful, not just because of the scenes that are shown in the flashback 
um, but because of the reactions. Yes. You see people who are hard as steel the whole movie start to cry and start to crack and show emotion. It's a beautiful thing to see these people breaking and letting in the light. Yeah. It's beautifully shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's edited so well that for you, you never for a second get drawn out of the movie in that point. That point is actually, for me, the point of the movie where you're drawn in the most because it's so relatable. If you've lived life, which everyone viewing this has, you're going to experience, or you have experienced loss, you're going to experience love, you're going to experience hate, you're going to experience or see war and what it causes. Mm -hmm. um, and that part is touched on in this film, and it's very relatable. That scene, just about every time I watch it, I either cry or I start crying and my eyes tear up, so yeah. it's just, it's absolutely... He admitted it. Yeah, it's, yeah, admitted it's absolutely it. beautiful. So uh, I would definitely recommend this movie. It is um, something that I would say morally I have no problem uh, recommending. Obviously there's a, there's a slight romance angle. Uh, everyone's standards are different on that, but I think seen in context, a lot of what happens is understandable and not, uh, not inappropriate or sexualized in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. and it's very moving, and it's going to create a lot of. I think it's going to create a lot of discussion between you and your family and your friends about life and about God and and a lot of great topics. It's definitely thought provoking. I agree completely with Jonathan. Um, but of course, yes. Okay. I love this this film. This film is it's well made. The story is just excellent. It brings up a lot of life questions. Um, the acting is phenomenal by everyone there's this one actor who kind of bugs me but that's because she's supposed to be that way yeah Fiona in the film. kind of needs, yeah she needs a little help a little coaching but you know I mean we're not actors but we and with looks like that you don't have to act no, that's true yeah. well she's all right yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's cute yeah. it's, it's, well you know and since we're talking about the giver and giving Aaron I, I'd like to give something to you this is this is a breath mint I mean, I'm a friend, but you I'm going to sit next to you here for a while now, and it's it's like Godzilla ate a garlic factory. And you, you well, block. unfortunately, you're out of luck, because those, that's actually Tylenol. Tylenol? For the headache you're giving me. Oh, okay. So I will I will take those. Oh, okay. Well, it, it, it might improve your breath, and so I would be happy with that. That was ad lib. Yes. We're good at that. Well, he is. I'm not. That reminds me of before, this young man looks like Asher, or Asher looks like this man. Um, well, in one scene. Yeah, they, we're gonna. There's a picture. We're gonna put up a picture, and you'll see. What it, see? There it is. Look at how is this? That is so you. That looks just like you. Well, it's scary. This is scary. To an extent. This is scary. Let me see. He's, he's all like. <laughs> see, but. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, I would recommend the movie, and uh, it's. I think it's also worth owning. It's very rewatchable, and the more you watch it, the more you'll learn from it. So I would say it's worth it. Yeah, definitely worth the uh, the time and and uh, it's it gives I get it I give it uh, ten out of ten stars for sure absolutely. He gives it ten out of ten. I give it ten out of ten or higher if that's possible. To to wrap this up as I like to say in all of my reviews. Yeah. <laughs> so before you watch this film, look up the content on Plugged In or IMDb or some site that you trust and make sure it's okay for you or your children to watch. Right. Don't um, just trust us. Yeah. Do your research. Yeah, do your do research. You. And if you get offended, that's not... D don't get mad at me or him. We didn't make the movie. Yeah, we didn't make the movie. And yes, there... Like I said, there's, you know, various things. And yeah. if they bother you, that's because of your standards, not ours. So Exactly. So don't come hunt us down. Don't shoot us. Yeah. Don't do anything crazy or rash. Just watch the movie. It about concludes the lamest review ever. Yeah, this was way too long. We are going to cut so much out of this Probably. review. Probably. And that's a good thing. Yeah, because... That is a good thing. Because it's... it's uh, yeah, what time is it? Um, it's quor quarter, it's quarter to one in the morning. Yeah. Um, and we so. still look great. Yeah, well, he does. Uh, I guess, I mean, caffeine, it does wonders. Yeah. So. If you notice in the review, I'm always going like this, so... No, don't let him fool you. That's not caffeine. That's his natural tick. He does that. Yeah. I'm, I'm always like really close to just smacking him one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always and I'm always talking my way out of it. That's yeah. that's what it is. I'm pretty sure we're out of review territory. Yeah. Until next time. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Aaron. Stay busy and uh, have fun. And good night, Mrs. Calabash, whoever you are.
parting is such sweet sorrow, then I must say good night to this be Mario. It doesn't work either. See what I have to deal with. He does have to deal with this on an often basis. Yeah. All right, starting over. Thanks for watching the review. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jonathan. And uh, check out my channel once in a while. I'm planning on putting up uh, a lot more movie reviews of the films I like. So. And we may have a, a classic movie review coming up. That's true. We're not sure what it is. He's got a lot of stuff in mind, so yeah. we'll see. Stay tuned. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> that took us a long time. Almost an hour.